Welcome back to my channel. Today is February 15th and I, as you can see, have an unboxing. I purchased four paintings um, February 8th. They shipped out on the 10th and I received it on the 13th. So there are four paintings, but I will be um, doing one painting or unboxing one painting at a time. So I will have four separate videos. They will not be in necessarily the order in which they were released, but two of them are new releases over the last two new release periods. The other two have been paintings I've been trying to get for a while and they were either sold out or at the time that I would see them, I would already be ordering something else and I wanted to get that. So anyway, I now have four of, four of many paintings that I want, but I just purchased four of these ones. Um, three of them, I think, are going to be Chuck Pinson's. This is one of Chuck Pinson's. My son picked out the paintings that I'll be in the order in which I'll be opening them. So, yeah, um, the one that I want to open is will be the next. The one I want to open now will be the next one I actually open in my next video. But <clears throat> um, at this point, I now have nine or ten Chuck Pinsons out of all that he has. I'm waiting for one to come back in stock. Hopefully it comes in soon. This That is particular one. No matter how many times I've tried to get it, it's been out of stock. So I think it's uh, probably one of his most popular paintings. But anyway, let's get going on this. Um, this painting is Catching Dreams. Hopefully my lighting is okay where you can see this. Let's see if I come closer if it makes it any better. No, let me turn some lights on. I'm sorry about this camera. This this webcam is definitely not good for um, um, taking videos. Or maybe it's better if I have it far. Yeah, I guess the farther away I have it, the better the image is. But this is a Chuck Pinson. It is Catching Dreams. And it is, as you can see, a Diamond Art Club. It is round with AB and it is a 28 by 22 inches or 71 by 56 centimeters. And let's go ahead and get in this. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Valentine's Day for those who celebrate it. I know a lot of people, my husband being one of them, believes that it is the card companies and the candy companies as well as flower shops way of making money um, and it probably is restaurants make a lot of money jewelry stores make a lot of money but you know it shouldn't take Valentine's Day to be how you show your significant other how you feel that should be something that should be done year round I'm not saying you should buy some you know buy jewelry or all that year round but spending time and showing your special person how much you love them should not just be done on valentine's day and it should not have to be done with buying gifts now this is a, my own personal opinion we do not buy each other anything for valentine's day we've been we did the first few years that we were together, but um, we don't now. And, that, and I'm okay with that. And my husband had to work anyway. He's worked insane hours this week. I'll be talking about that in my whip and chat. But, um, yeah. So I'm just trying to get the kit out of the bottom of the box. There you go. Okay, so the box is empty. Set this off to the side. Like I said, I'm not going to go through the, the kit. Most everybody knows what comes in a Diamond Art Club toolkit. You get two hearts of wax, 
If you get the clear tray with a funnel, you get a single placer pen or pen with single placer and a squishy and a few bags. And this one came with a five placer. So there's your diamond clip bag or kit. Then it also comes with the sticker that shows your image, has your schematic with your symbol, uh, the symbol and the DMC code. And I do not use this to kit up my um, paintings. Is I like the. I like the um, idea, but these thing, these stickers, once you put it on something, you can't get it off without tearing it up and it leaves adhesive. So um, some people just cut them out and stick them to their um, storage system by way of scotch tape. That way they can just pull it off. Others go ahead and actually stick it on there. I myself, I don't use symbols or DMC codes on my storage system. I go just in the order of the number. I just put numbers on my storage system um, like this. Where I just, and this isn't going to be in an order, I'm just grabbing one that's off to the side. But um, I just do them in number. And you can't see that. Let me see if I take this out of here. See if you can see it better this way. This is number 25. So I just put 25 on my Harbor Freight or whatever my storage system is. That way, as I'm kitting up other paintings, I don't have to change labels or stickers or symbols or anything like that. I can just dump those out into my baggies, put them away and find number 25 and pour it in there. So that's how I do this. I keep this off to the side because depending on the angle that I'm doing my painting will determine if I'm able to see the schematic that is on the painting. So I just keep this off to the side and then I always know what I need. So also comes with the drills. Sorry about that. Let me Sorry about the movement. Just bear with me one second here. I'm going to bring this up a little more. Okay. Um, we'll go through the drills here in a second. And the canvas, which is pretty much what everybody comes on here to see is the canvases. <clears throat> we already know that Diamond Art Club has the better of your drills that you're going to find whether it be square or round, and they are constantly improving. So, you know, it doesn't matter. We're always going to find some trash. There's always going to be a little bit of trash in our drills. But awesome. So then we also get, this comes with all of your diamond painting kits, whether it doesn't matter if it's round or square, it will come with your painting. And it is the step-by-step -step instructions for diamond painting. And they send you a little, little thank you for your purchase. And there are your steps to diamond painting. There are nine steps. And then you also receive a 10% off your next purchase as a thank you from Diamond Art Club. So, that there, don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and roll my painting backwards so it will relax and lay a little easier, lay flat a little easier. So have you purchased any of more recent releases? If so, put that in your comments, what it is you've released or released, what you've purchased of the new releases. And are there any that you are waiting to get, you know, for them to get back in stock or anything that you're still wanting to get that you've had to wait for. I have, I have more that I have to wait for. My wish list for Diamond Art Club is 
long, 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 long. So I'm having to uh, refrain myself from purchasing, and this broke my no buy. But yeah, well, you know how that goes. So catching dreams, Chuck Pinson. This is absolutely beautiful painting. It's got such rich golds and yellows and you know I can't wait to do this. This is this is not going to be kitted up this right away. This is not going to be done right away. This will be put away in my stash because I am still trying to complete my stash from last year. I've gotten four done. I'm on my fifth one, which is a Chuck Pinson, by the way. I'm working on one now. But in this, you're able to see, and I'm sorry I can't get the whole picture in view, so I'll have to move things. But you're able to see, let's see, trying to see which direction I need to move this to. There are mountains in the background. There are trees. There's some um, little houses, kind of like a little little village off of, under the mountains, or a little town. You had a sailboat. You got a big sailboat here, and we've got. If you move this down farther, there is a one of the wooden wagons right here that is full of flowers. Somebody has taken that and either turned it into like a pot, a planter of flowers, or it may be they've picked them all and they're going to you know, move them. Um. Gosh, I wish this picture was better, and I, I am so sorry. This view is not good. I've got it all. Let me see if I can bring this up. And that doesn't help. Hang on here one second. Let me change them one second. Okay, I think this might be a little better. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Um... You can see the sailboat, the big sailboat here, and then there's a smaller one here. And the uh, little planner, wagon wheel planner. And there's a house here on this side. You see the mountains and the trees. And there's birds. Um, let's see if you can see the birds. There's the birds. Yeah, there's a a bird here. Being round, you're not going to see the image as well um, before putting the diamonds down as you can if it was a square painting. But this is this is going to be a beautiful painting. There's. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. My dog comes down right away. Has to go. Has to be let out. So. Oh, that's that glare. Let me see if I can. Remove the glare. There we go. So, <clears throat> um, the symbols are clear. There's, and you're not able to see that because my camera is so bad. But there are perfectly clear symbols. Very sticky, as always. Also, I don't know if you're able to see this, but you see a lot of wrinkles here in this. This will not, these wrinkles are in the, the cover that's over top of the painting. It does not affect the glue. This is, because this is a poured glue, you will not get rivers and bubbles like you do with double-sided adhesive or double-sided tape. This the paper get or the cover gets the wrinkles because it's rolled up. So when this is initially laid, the glue's poured and then the clear cover is put over top of it. It does not get it's nice and smooth when the clear cover is smooth when it first gets laid on the poured glue. But because of rolling up the painting, it causes air to get underneath the cover and then forms a bubble, but the bubble is only in between the glue and the cover. It is not in 
the between the glue and the canvas. So if you pull this back, there are no, it's it's perfectly clear. There's you don't see any blemishes or anything in the canvas itself. When you reapply this to the canvas and smooth it out, and you can hear the air bubbles on just this that's right between the glue, uh, glue and the cover itself, it will smooth out. So you're not going to have popping drills or drills that don't lay properly because of the glue. So that is, if you, so if you see these, like over here, there's quite a few um, wrinkles in here. Let's see if I can bring you down a little bit more. Sorry. <clears throat> you see, there's one right. I'm trying to figure out how I can. There's one right here. You see that one right here? Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this back. Sometimes you have to do it a couple times because you, know, you don't get it straight the first time. Just take your arm. You can also do this with a roller. Let me see if I can find my roller and I'll show you. Take, you can take your ruler and you can push the air out using your ruler. Like I said, the air is just between the cover and the glue. It, not between the glue and the canvas. But between the glue and the canvas, that's where you would have your popping drills and your rivers. But like I said, you don't get that with um, with poured glue. So, all right. So let me go ahead and flip this over, and we will take a look at these drills. Now, like I said, there are forty-seven colors. In this, and there are it appears to be two ABs, and there's a there's a good amount of drills in this. If the crinkle bothers you, um, could you please just mute your phone or turn your volume down for just a second? I personally like the crinkle. That means I've got a painting. All right, one second here. All right, sorry about that. I had to let my dog back in. He spends all day long in. In, up in the guest room on the bed sleeping and then I go to do something and he decides he's got to go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, got a lot of long strips. I'm going to go ahead and set this one here off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and start with the, the smaller bags. It has less diamonds and will probably be the ones that we will find the ABs in. Yep, I see one now. All right, so our first color is 797. Let me see if I can get some light here so we can see the color better. This is 797, or sorry, 796. And we've got a light blue, 775. We've got like a Beigey 738. We've got 321, a nice red. I'm trying to see if you can get these colors or not. Hold on one second. I'm going to see if I can change my lighting. One second, please. 
Okay, I'm back. All right, I don't know if this is any better for you. I'm on the opposite side of the house that has the windows. And if I'm too close to the windows, it's too bright. And if I'm not close enough, it's too dark. So, but this is a, it's like a pinkish red. Then we've got a mauve pink. It's $33.50. You can see it better from this side. And we've got one fifty-five, seven, uh, six forty-eight, four thirty-eight, three thirty-three, eight twenty-three, eight forty-one, nine oh seven. This is my son's favorite color, like a lime green or chartreuse green. We've got stragglers. Somebody wanted to be green. They didn't get their wish. They turned blue. We got 3841. Here's our first ABs, 141. And for anybody new to diamond painting, AB stands for Aurora Borealis. This is a special coating that they put over top of the regular drills that casts like rainbow effecty colors. Um, when you're against a solid color, and it just gives it just a little extra sparkle. We got 436, and there's another AB, 134. This is the green. And you can see, you can see how this here sparkles more than this does. So that's the, let's flip it over. Yep, we got a straggler in here too. If you can see how this color here reflects off more than these. These are shiny. You know, these, these girls here are shiny, but these, you can see the big difference in them. Okay, so then we've got 317, 3770, 905, and 414. So that's our first strip. And there are the smaller bags opposed to the other ones. All right. This one here, $38.55. We have two bags of $38.60. And now the sun is going to go behind the clouds. We've got two bags of $7.79. Got 356 and 3772, 402, and we have one bag of 3371. Oops, sorry, 3371. And that's all of this one. And the last strip is the longest strip. Thirty-seven seventy-six, seven fifty-four, thirty-eight sixty-four, six ninety-nine. So before the the trees and the bushes, there's not a whole lot of green in this one. At thirty-eight thirty, nine oh four. 890. <clears throat> trying to get some light in here because the sun went away. I'm not getting good, I'm not able to get the true color for you, and I apologize for my lighting. I have 743, 413, 3799. It's like a, a charcoal gray. 550. It's like a like a plum purple or yeah, it's about a plum, I think. Maybe a little lighter. 355, 327, 3854, 727. This will be 
the yellow that we see in the um, in the sky and in the uh, sailboats, the reflections from the sky. 3861, one bag of 310. No 310 life here. This, this is respectful 310s. 3771, 3778, and we have two bags of 3778. So, again, that is all the drills for this one. And this painting um, will eventually be um, a whip and chat on my channel. I will eventually start working on it, but right now, I've got to continue to focus on my 2019 uh, stash and trying to work through it. Any painting that I've already got kit up or um, I've started on is what I'm working on and nothing, nothing beyond that. I'm going to try and bring you up a little bit so you can... Sorry, I don't need to be in this. So you can get pretty much a full, as much of a full view as I can give you. I'll bring this down a little. And we got the schematic I meant to mention. There's a schematic on this side here. So when I'm on this side, I can focus on this. If it's covered up, well then this lays beside it. There's a lot of times I put tape down or the, I will be, I take the clear cover off and I replace it with these squares. You can purchase these on Amazon from um, Star Wars. You can get these, or you can purchase these off of AliExpress. But I'll just pull back the clear cover. I'll show you here, just for example. So I'll go ahead and pull back this clear cover. And then I will line this up to where the tape ends on the canvas, or the glue ends, excuse me. This is glue, not tape. And I'll just lay these down. And I will do this over the entire canvas. And as I pull it up, pull it, you know, as I'm working on a section, a lot of times I'll just pull it off. And I don't want to keep that whole section open. I'll just turn it then. And it'll overlap the one that I have previously here. So let me see here. I got time that I'll hurry up and just give you a partial example of what I'm talking about. So I'll lay that one there. And then I'll put this one here. I over you know overlap it a little bit so I don't have any glue this exposed when I'm not working on it. Okay. All right, so here's, I'm gonna try and push out any of the air that might get underneath there. Okay, so this is an example of what the first part might look like. When I, and I always start from, I know this is upside down to you, or in right side up for you, but I usually start, start at the bottom right hand corner. That way as I'm work, cause I am right handed. So as I'm working on things, my arm's not getting in the glue. But so I would start, say this would be the bottom right hand corner. I would go ahead and take this off and start down here, but it's going to be a while before I get up here. So I'll go ahead and turn it. And I will work up to this point because there's going to be another, um, this is going to be here. So I will go to say that point. And then I'll go ahead and take this off and I will move it up. And as I do that with each piece, I take it off and turn it, take it off and turn it as I need to, to um, be able to keep the glue covered when I'm not working on that specific section. But I don't have to have such tiny little squares that I'm covering this with as well. So anyway, um, this I love Chuck Pence and paintings. I look forward to many more coming from him. And I look forward to getting on this one here eventually. This one might be a spring project if I can get through what I already have to get done. But eventually this one will get on the drafting table and will be being worked on. 
So if you have any questions about this painting or any other painting that you've seen on my channel or any painting that you are interested in and just curious about, um, please leave that in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. And if you wouldn't mind, please share my channel and subscribe for future videos and hit the bell so you will get notifications when I am putting up either an unboxing or a whip and chat or anything else that might show up on my channel. I keep saying I'm going to do some crocheting, but I've just been trying to get some of these paintings done. And by the time I get the paintings done, it'll be summer and then I won't be crocheting then either because it's too hot in the summer to crochet. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have any suggestions that, of things that you'd like to see on my channel, please leave that in the comments below. I will have my email, my Instagram, and my Facebook links in the description box. So if you need to reach out to me or want to reach out to me for any reason, you'll be able to contact me through either Instagram, Facebook, or my email. So I hope you had a fabulous Valentine's. If you did do anything for Valentine's Day, or if your significant other or children gave you something special for Valentine's Day, please leave that in the comments. I'd be interested to read and see what you got and how you celebrated your Valentine's Day. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again on Tuesday for another unboxing as well as a whip and chat. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here so I can get this up and so I can go ahead and start recording another video. Until next time, guys, have a wonderful day and talk to you soon. See ya!